walking across England, and he said to my producer, John, the uh, thing we must do is get Julian Cope on, right? Because uh, it'd be great to talk to him, you know, top bloke, and we can talk about the modern antiquarian and all these things, um, but also he can do all the jingles for the Crucial Three. So uh, John emailed Julian Cope, and uh, Julian said, oh, fantastic, absolutely, would love to, no problem at all, promptly disappeared for about three months. So uh, he was booked for June the 7th, July the 7th came and went, August the 7th came and went, September the 7th, and here we are. Tonight on the programme, uh, we bring you Julian Cope, who is going to be talking about uh, all manner of things, and in particular, the 21st century traveller in prehistoric Europe, his new book, The European Megalithic. The Megalithic European. I was looking at the back first, right? It comes, I'll tell you how much of a book this is. That is how much of a book that is. It's compared to the modern antiquarian, which by comparison is, is a paltry... Oh, no, that sounded heavier, didn't it? Right. <laughs> Which do you think? The new one's 50 pages. Well, perhaps we, this, is a, this is a great new radio item, isn't it? It's, there's the Galileo quiz, right? Like dropping things from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? Can you tell which is Julian Cope's new book and which is Julian Cope's old book? You see, <laughs> they think they can tell in the other room, but they can see. Perhaps we should have a text competition on this, 88 to 91, see if you think... If you think that this is Julian Cope's new book, text 88 to 91 and say 1. If you think that this is Julian Cope's new book, text 88 to 91 and put 3, just for devilment. All right, and we'll see how many people get it right. It's a kind of poll to run throughout the programme. Uh, programmes have been made out of less. Uh, also, we will have the... Is there something to plug into? Oh, <laughs> <Did you> plug <laughs> in? headphones and no wire. Yeah, if you want to, you're only going to hear you and me anyway. Yeah, but I never it? hear myself on the radio. Anymore. Oh, all right, then. I don't know whether you're in the right place there. I think you're better in that white box over there by the bourbon creams. Try there. Chris will inject you and we'll be away. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Right, OK. Julian Cope, welcome. <laughs> How are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. It's taken a while, as I say, but there is a certain symmetry, cos June the 7th was the first show, and here you are, September the 7th. So yep. you're happy with that. Uh, I'm a righteous artist. Where did you disappear to all that? I mean, I know the answer to this, but where yeah. did you disappear to all um, that time? Sardinia, mm -hmm. um, Scandinavia, mm -hmm. Scotland, mm -hmm. And a little bit of Ireland. Right. Okay. Was this was this all visiting sort of megalithic and uh, and prehistoric yeah. sites for, yeah. for? I'm addicted to foreigners being rude to me in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> uh, so was this for? Um, I mean, obviously there's uh, there's already mm -hmm. these books, but was for this work on a third one that you yeah. uh, that you've disappeared? Yeah. The 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 sum and bonum of the work that I've been doing. Yeah. The, the is is going to be called. Let me speak to the driver. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. I've been commissioned we'll... for six years and I still haven't really still haven't started done. it. Yes, but you've not been hanging around because, you've, you I mean, the, the modern antiquarian... For those who don't know, uh, this is uh, Julian Cope's first book. The, uh, well, it wasn't the first book because it was head-on and things like that. But the, the first of these books, The Modern Antiquarian, A Premillennial Odyssey Through Megalithic Britain, which is just, uh, you know, all the prehistoric sites in Britain. Mm. All? Do you think... Do you claim all? No. Couldn't claim all. No. All the ones that... I mean, none of them... I was quite pragmatic here. There was none of them where you're going to get, you know, attacked by vicious dogs, because mm -hmm. all the vicious dogs, I'd been there first and got attacked by them. Mm -hmm. um, and ones where they were just crap. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a, that's a good way of putting together a book. But I think we'll get to, I think we'll get to the books, uh, you know, uh, for a bit, but I just want to find out sort of where you are at the moment. Where do you live? Marlborough Downs, Wiltshire, right, North okay. Wiltshire. What sort, what sort of house do you live in? Uh, let's old... just pick, I'm just picturing okay. Julian Cope, you see, but people, let's just, like, set you in domestic context. Let's, okay. let, let's go to Shea Cope. Do we drive down a sort of windy country lane and, and, and down a private drive, sweeping gravel, Brideshead revisited thing? It's a bit weirder. Is it? Yeah. I live 1,200 yards from where Arthur C. Clarke was stationed during the war. Right. Next to him, so it's a massive flat place. It's a big hangar. Mm-hmm full of um, what I would say the people who live there are the ingredients of <laughs> the village. And, um, yeah, they, they, they worship Christ in a pagan kind of way. Right. And um, I, uh, I write in a video blue room. Yes. With um, 
with a shrine of double neck guitars. Right. And um, including Shergold. Shergold, Gibson, Mosrite. Fantastic. They're all there. Yeah. And um, yeah. Um, and I'm informed by the land. Right. Okay then. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and describe to us your bedroom. Entire. Well, video blue. Yeah. Um, there are probably things that I shouldn't say about it because it's, you know, it's it's a bit culty. Okay, and uh, you live with your uh, your long-time mm, wife, my delightful missus, my American missus, right, and my two girls called Avalon and Albany. Right, you see, it's giving us the full picture for those who yeah. don't know you. Your house also contains a mysterious room. No, the girls call it the mysterious room because that's got uh, all the. You know, kind of dangerous stuff from my past. Right. Like the mic stand. That and, you used to climb up with yeah, that foot Yeah. Yeah, and um, my dog jackets mm -hmm. and my um, inflatable teardrop explodes trousers and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, all right. And... Um, all the stuff you used to wear to parents' <clears throat> evening to embarrass them. Yeah. In your, wild, that, in your exactly. wilder, younger days. Yeah. yeah. You drop them off, you know, at school with yeah. the fluorescent pink trousers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still paint your face ever? No, because I'm, you know, now I'm going through my Rasputin period. Right. Yeah, Rastaputin period. <laughs> <laughs> Rastaputin, yeah. Very good, right. Because uh, you used to paint your face quite a lot, didn't you? used to like oh, a bit of an orange, you had yeah. an orange period, orange didn't you? period, definitely, yeah. 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 Well tangoed at one point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to what end? I mean, it's just... Um, it was probably fitted some current theory. Mm, yeah. You know, that I've seriously undermined in the last few years of research. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and do you record that? Have you got a studio? I mean, do you, are you still making music all the time, regularly, on and off, or...? Um, fairly regularly, yeah. Right. Yeah, I have... We were talking about this, the fact that the internet, you know, has an ability to, you know, suck the artist dry of almost anything that they put out, yeah. however culty. Yeah. Um, you know, I've just done an album of... double album of VCS3 synthesizer. Yeah? Well, yeah, why not? Yeah, it's... There's a market for so it. So you don't have a record deal, you do it all yourself now, then? I haven't had a deal since 96. You, haven't, you don't have a manager? I haven't had a manager since 97. Right, that's probably um, can't get hold of you for three months at a time. Yeah. You don't have a tour manager? I haven't had a tour manager. Do the get I, I am Howling Wolf, and I arrive at the gig, and, you know, they scurry around and cluck a bit. Go and everywhere go, on your Buddy own. Buddy on his own. <laughs> <laughs> right. Better get it together. Well, listen, you're going to play a couple of songs for us later on, on mm. your, uh, your uh, what is it, sort of fluorescent green... Fluorescent green... Plug board. It's like pedal yeah, board thing. Pedal board. And bright green guitar. Yeah. Right, new songs? New songs. Right, OK. Yeah. Then. And also, we're going to talk about the uh, megalithic European and uh, also, the, you know, uh, whatever else Julian's up to and lots of questions that have come in. So we will get there, but we're going to play... Um, we were deciding what song, what record of Julian's to play, and we both agreed that the best track off the album that I happened to bring, purely by chance, Peggy's Suicide, was um, Safe Surfer. Absolutely. Which is eight minutes long. So uh, here's three of those eight minutes. FM fade. We fade in just as the three minute intro, yeah. and then we fade in just as the vocals come in so we can get to the news. That's all right, isn't yeah, it? Completely. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. His name? No, Joe Leeway. It wasn't. That was Thompson Twins, wasn't it? He Joe was Leeway that... solo album. I had a, B a B side call that. <laughs> Did you, Joe Leeway solo album? Um, uh, anyway, but that was their only hit. Now, that must be a real bummer, because you get a hit and you think euphoria, don't you? And you're, yeah. you're, well, you don't think euphoria, yeah. you feel euphoria. And you think, we're away, and you pack up your job, whatever it is, and only one hit. It's just and, and they were bigging up Nick Drake like a decade too early. Well, yeah, no, there you go. And, Unlucky. And he was a mate of Dave Gilmore's, isn't he, I think? Yeah. But see, in, in that song, they say, the morning lasted all day. And I think that's nice, because the best part of any day... It's the very early morning. It's the morning, isn't it? You know? yeah. Absolutely. If it's a rainy day, you just get better quality of rain in the morning. Absolutely, and yeah. it's a sunny day, and it's sunny in the morning, and the light's bright, and you want it to last all yeah. Yeah. It's right, isn't it? I'll play that song uh, for uh, Damien Halliwell, who's a truck driver. Um, uh, you've toured uh, extensively, especially in your earlier days, mm. uh, uh, in Pennsylvania. Ever been, have you ever been... I was discussing this with a girl called Eddie last week. Um, have you ever been to Intercourse, Pennsylvania? It exists. It's right. Because, and he sent me the T-shirt. I've left it upstairs, actually. Uh, this was, uh, but he was saying, uh, your mention of intercourse, Pennsylvania, reminded me of lots of other unusually named towns around Pennsylvania. Influx of one. Scalp level. <laughs> wow. Right? That's a band. It, it, well, it ought yeah. to be, shouldn't it? Economy. Brilliant. 
84. Wow. Industry, Pennsylvania. Paint. <laughs> wow. Mars. Effort. Fair chance. King of... It sounds like the, the uh, racing results, this, doesn't it? From uh, the 330 at Doncaster. Fair chance, King of Prussia, Plum and Moon are all towns in Pennsylvania. And also, he says, uh, northeast of the city of York. Pennsylvania edition. Yeah. Is, uh, I, I had, in well, I noticed in eastern England mm. that you could do a tour of around the wash from Boston to Denver, taking in cowpool. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you so you know, it's um, maybe it's that kind of inbred Eastern th people who've named them all. But imagine gl growing up in paint. Paint. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, Julian Cope is with us this evening, and we will talk to him and hear a song after we've heard from Thirteen Senses. And uh, nice song that I think that is uh, into the fire. Um, okay, uh, Julian Cote with, is with us. Ne are you going to kneel down again, sit down yeah, again, and talk? Because yeah. I want to talk to you about this new book and everything. Uh, and then, you, then you're going to play a song for us. It take you long to ready yourself to play yeah. a song. No, okay, then fine. Um, uh, because uh, the modern antiquarian uh, came out when? Uh, oh, Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight, right? And uh, I mean, this is a massive undertaking. I mean, this is an encyclopedic thing, isn't yeah, it? Really? Yeah. For if you visit every site with with both the modern antiquarian and uh, the um, the new one the megalithic European. You actually, you, visit, you don't just sit and research off the internet, you visit every site. Yeah. So how many sites do you think? It says over 300, I've answered the own question. Yeah, right? so I went to about, well, I, end, I ended up going to about 500 because so many of them are caned. Mm. And you've got to go there. And the thing is... Why have you got to go there? Why can't you just write up what other people have written and sort of, you know, for some of them anyway? I just love them. Yeah. You just go there and you just, you know, so much is not known about our past and to go there is just to to see you know something that was that was done it was created before like all the neuroses of you know taxes and stuff like this so mm. it's just got a real beauty about it i mean what, what forms do they take for them i mean i mean are we talking mainly standing stones stone circles standing stones um stone circles are mainly a british thing mm. which is weird because you'd think that something as universal as a circle would be everywhere mm. but it isn't it's very much a british thing with bits here and there um semicircles some places are the the um There's scandinavians like... love boat shapes yeah you know but they're just all any way of burying people and having a big hoo-ha and the knees up simultaneously they will arrange some kind of and they'll always orientate it towards the sun because the sun's you know major league yeah and um probably was a farming community and so it's just a way of sort of um proto churches aren't they you know it's, it's just a repository of everybody's you know, hopes and dreams for thousands of years. And do you, I mean, do you, do you feel you've got to go there because each one, even though you've visited, I mean, if you've done the modern antiquarian, you know, in Great Britain, you've done uh, the megalithic European, and you're going on with research from there, you've vis visited what over a thousand of these. Yeah. I mean, do you still feel so? I mean, does it get mundane, or do you feel something every time you go to one of these? Honestly, three in the morning. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. Go to Skagarak. Yeah. Right? <laughs> which yeah. is where? Which is the very, very north tip of Jutland, which right. is, yeah, Denmark. Yeah. Standing there freezing, because I've, I've got, there, got there, you know, like two hours too early, because yeah. the Danes think that their place is a lot smaller than it really is. So you get there and you're freezing cold in Skagarak. And I thought, well, I'm in Skagarak. Mm. How many people ever go to a place with a, such a magnificent name? Mm. So it could have been crap just to be in Skagarak was magnificent. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, and it was wonderful. And that was where they buried, you know, ritually buried people, um, first garroting them. Mm. And I thought, I want this. Right. Right. <clears throat> what are you intending with these books? I mean, you know, honestly, they, I mean, they, they are major undertakings, and they're sort of full of, you know, good photographs and illustrations, reconstructions, directions to every monument, maps, site, and, you know, drawings and overviews and things. I mean, are you trying to... Uh, it, but at the same time, it's very it's very personal. It's a, it, I can not think of anything else that's quite like this, except possibly Wisdom or something, the cricket Bible. I mean, it's a reference book, and mm. yet very personal, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm the acid Wainwright. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So, I mean, do you get taken seriously by the academic establishment? I don't... Uh, uh, yeah, I've done a series of lectures at the British Museum, you know, right, and yeah. one of them, I did this, I did this two-day series um, called Discover Odin, and I did it in full face paint with five-inch platforms. Right. And it was great, because the, the director was, he, he was going to school, yes, they always used to think I was rather unusual in, in my day, you know, and I do accept your metaphor. Right, yeah, right. So they, they do embrace you then, should yeah. it, sh should oh, it yeah. matter to you, right? Um, and, and have you uh, sort of, do you think, through going to all these places, has it changed you as a person? Have you reached an understanding of kind of who we are because of all this or where we come from? Or is that, you know, is it not, does it not work like that? I, yeah, I think I've got a take on what's universal about human beings. And the thing is, we were just the same hung up, weird, obsessive tossers 6,000 years ago right. as we are now. Yeah. And the great part about it is, is we're always being told, you know, how crap we are. We were crap then. <laughs> And is that is should we be reassured by this? I think that the mere fact that that has informed us for six thousand years suggests it may well have informed us for the thirty thousand years before. Right. Okay. Fairly Eternally yeah. crap, but good at it. <laughs> and when's it? Is it out there? The the uh, the Four megalithic weeks. European. Okay. Yeah. And Four how much weeks. is it going to be? It's, uh, well, thirty-five pounds. I know thirty-five, but you know, I mean, it's a serious yeah, piece. You, know, isn't you it? dropped yeah. it. You know, and you know what it's like. And. Ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience, it is 48 pages more than the last book. And the last book was 610 fo colour photos. This one's 813. Right, OK. okay. And you will be able to get it cheaper than that, won't you, I should imagine? Yeah, Amazon, they'll just be ripping me off, you know, but that's not a problem. <laughs> all right. Do you, do you drag the kids to all these? I mean, do, they, no. I mean, do the kids want to go on holiday no. to uh, no. Tossa de Mar and you say, no, we're going to Skagarak again? <laughs> yes. Oh, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, just at, towards the end of the modern antiquarian, um, Albany woke up just as we arrived at the place, and she looked and she she woke up and she just went, "No stones." <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. And, and so I think we'll have a tune now. If that's all right. Oh, well, that'll be okay. Move yes, move over stealthily the... over there. And okay. uh, Julian wearing his. Um, his um, do you call that garment a body warmer? I don't know, you know, I've had this since the teardrop explodes. Have you? Yeah. Really? A hoodie that I've been wearing since the teardrop. Well, there Very you go. Economical. Right, OK. Bright green, pea green guitar, I would say that was. Yeah, I think you're right. Pea green and luminous pedal board. Now okay. then, this is a new song. Oh! OK. What's it called? This song was written when I'd been... I'd been I woke up every morning for two years at quarter to five. Yeah. So that I could write. And I realised that I was never out of door. You know, I was, you know like when I was writing the main text, I was just... And then this one day, I realised that I hadn't been out for like a month and a half. Yeah. And I wrote this song, which is called I'm Living in the Room They Found Saddam In, because that's what the walls were closing in. Right. OK, this is me. Here we go.
them uh, living in the room they found Saddam in new song performed. Is that a world exclusive? Then? World exclusive. Uh, and then, uh, on live on Mark Radcliffe. Uh, performed by Julian Cope. Uh, we'll have another tune and um, more from Julian a bit later on. Bob Dylan. This is quite nice stuff, is it? No. No. <laughs> All right, then, mixed stuff. Is it kind of... Stafford's crap. <laughs> it's not. It's... No, I, I tell you what, mate. It's, it, it, the Midlands is the heart and soul of these islands, so the fact that you're in the Midlands, mate, means that it's fairly sound. <laughs> is, that know, make, is that making you feel any I, better? I think so. In fact, it was, uh, it was uh, talking about towns. I forgot to mention, um, uh, Chris Lee, the dark prince, our engineer. So, I mean, uh, do you go around to all these sites yourself and kind of, uh, you know, imbibe? Uh, just, yes, yeah. I've kind of been doing the whole penguin tick them off thing, which is a bit sad, but. It's not? Sounds good. That's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> we like that. We like that. Anyway, um, well, tell us what this tune is then. Hey, give it to them. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not, they've all got that <laughs> fake kind of you know, raga stuff. <laughs> all right. It's all welcome play. Killing Moon is what you meant, wasn't that's it? That's what I meant. I meant yeah. Killing Moon, yeah. 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 You've yeah. just been, you know, because you've got Julian on there and it's discombobulated you and you've said the wrong one, you've just blurted it out, haven't you? Yeah, that's correct. Yes, all yeah, right yeah. then. I knew that. Yeah, all right the then. Same coat, whatever. <laughs> yes, all right. It fairly do. Then. I'm not at all sure, actually. This is going very well that I've put the record on. Uh, there you go. All right, it's the influence of Julian Cope. He's denying Echo and the Bunny Men airtime. <laughs> That's Just not. by looking at me through his big glasses. Um, all right, Dean, we will send you a cup for correctly identifying Echo and the Bunny Men and the Killing Moon. That's what I meant, yeah. That, I know it's what you meant. I know we've, we, we could feel that that was what you meant. Uh, nice talking to you, mate. Good night. See you. Bye-bye. The crucial three... Two. He's gone. Oh, no. Well, no. He said, he said he's gone to practice his other song in the oh, corridor. Oh, dearie me. It's been nice to bit. say hello. Well, so two-thirds of the crucial three. Well, indeed so. Yes. You know, and uh, when we... Uh, Julian's... Uh, oh, he's coming back now. Oh, he's he, coming he, back. He's wandering back, yeah. <laughs> uh, because, yes, uh, because uh, Ian, we were going to have Julian on the first show, and as I said, but he disappeared for three months. Uh, put your headphones on, and then Janice can say hello to you. Mr. Big Green Guitar. <laughs> Hello, Julian. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm um, very well. Good. Life treating you well by the sounds of things. Yeah. What, what are you doing in Birmingham? Um, I do a show after Mark. I'm on um, between midnight and three every night. Come and do a live set when in a few months' time. <laughs> but we know uh, what you're like. So difficult to get hold of. Yeah, but I will. I will. <laughs> Brilliant. If I go back with somebody, I'm there for them. Great. Well, there you go, you see. <laughs> so, lovely. Very, so lovely. actually, you know, you could probably count on that for, like, probably definite for about 18 <laughs> months' time, if you're lucky. <laughs> well, last time, not the last time I saw you, but this vivid memory of, because one of my favourite places is Avebury, and um, you in the car park with a dog on the longest lead I've ever seen, if my memory serves me right. And when, when was it? When that was, was ages it? ago. It was, it was when I used to live um, uh, in Berkshire, and you were in... Were you in oh, Cone or somewhere? I can't remember. Yeah, Cone. But anyway, yeah, yeah, there you go. I've been, I've been in the same house for nine years. Yes. And I'm like, Mark and I were, were talking, like, how long would we see this? We just knew it was under a decade. Mm. And uh, I heard you mention Head On, Mark. Oh, yes, right. Because David yeah. Morrissey's bought the rights to that, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah you're doing a film yeah. of Head On, which was oh, your I sort do of auto. Hope not. They are. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? If they hadn't all, if they hadn't all turned into such complete, like, you know, non-heads, I'd be into it. <laughs> right. I'd never heard it now. <laughs> right. okay. Anyway. Is well, there any, is there any chance of it? me uh, dragging up and taking the part of Courtney Love? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's the shower scene I yeah. worry about. You and Lard. <laughs> you and Lard play, would be playing Courtney what? Love. Playing Courtney Both Love. Both of us. Yeah, two, because she's only got two facets to her personality. All <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we'll leave the shower sequence, thank you. Yes. If you're wondering okay. to what we refer, Psycho, it. it isn't. <laughs> uh, right. Very funny. OK, uh, what have you got on your show? Uh, All sorts. on the radio. All sorts. Yeah, this is on the radio. I thought we were talking with... I thought you had a song there. How long did you think the song was? Right, <laughs> go on then. Well, well, I'm live after midnight. Yes. Great music. Bye-bye. 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 Right. Uh, right, now, I'm going to play a tune from uh, this album, Young Forever, by Feldy, haven't you, Julian, right? been everywhere. Right, well, Aberfeldy, which is in Perth and Kinross, at the uh, top of Lock K. Hey, hey, hey. Not hey. far from Pit Lock. You want to know something good about Aberfeldy? Do, it's they, where make, do you make Jewers whiskey there? No, it's bigger than that. Oh, go on. Pontius Pilate came from there. Pontius Pilate? Pontius Pilate. Came from Aberfeldy? Well, he came from Fortingall, which is about three quarters of a mile from Aberfeldy. All that thing, what's that in the, um, oh, what's that book? And I'm people tell me. The, the Bible. Me, the Da Vinci. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Isn't that? He's a sod, that's that guy never went anywhere. I, he didn't even go to bloody Paris. It's How a novel. American is that? It's a novel. It's, oh, he's made yeah, it up. He could have gone. Could have gone, couldn't he? But could. isn't that got a connection? So anyway, it doesn't yeah, matter. So, yeah, it's a good connection. That's very American, though, to not even go to Paris. Anyway, uh, this is um, Aberfeldy with from the album Young Forever, right? Uh, on the front of which is a, a drawing of copulating uh, lions, yes. right? Um, but uh, this is an enchanting song, I think, called Summer's Gone, which is ironic because summer's just arrived, hasn't it? And it's staying for six weeks. Right. I don't know, but uh, there you go. Uh, back with Julian Cope after this. Radio. Uh, it's, it's a campaign I fully endorse. This digital thing. You know, they've got a feeling that we, we probably should be doing more on this programme. I, mean, I think, I think we, it's remiss of us, really, not to be being more uh, digital. Uh, but uh, anyway, right, um, uh, Julian Cope is with us tonight. Now, I asked people if they had any questions for you, and people have sent them in, so it's only fair that I should throw them at you, I think. Uh, Tracy from Solihull. Uh, please ask Julian why he insists on using fully seated venues for his gigs, but then encourages people to dance. Um, I think that that way you've got... You've got this element of the the refusenik element comes in, but at the same time, rock and roll was always seated. It was always meant to be like a um, you've al always had to fight bouncers and be in danger of your life. Going back to the hand jive in the fifties and stuff like that. I think that's essential. Right. Okay. Uh, can you tell us anything about the film adaptation of Head On? Well, we've done that. Secondly, do you know what is the latest situation with the nine ladies Stone Circle protest in Derbyshire? Asks Dunk. Um. No, we'll do if you don't. No. All right then. Has Julian got any plans for another fantastic multimedia evening at the British Museum? Says Stuart. Um, I, I've got too much that I've got to catch up with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, this is from Sally Hunt. Says, um, uh, I was delighted to hear that Julian Cope is on your show tonight. When I was a young girl many years ago, Julian's mum was my infant school teacher at Florendine Infant School in Amington, Tamworth. Yeah. yeah. I vividly remember Julian coming in to play music for his, and his mum regularly listened to tapes of him playing. I think that must have been before he made it big. Um, I never forgot that and listened to Julian's music as a student nurse. Please say a big hello to Julian. Uh, tonight I am working as a nurse on the neonatal unit in Leicester General Hospital, but will be tuning in to hear him. Thank you, Sally. Is that all right? That's, 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 that's all, all, all delightful. All right, what else have we got here? Um, uh, will you be taking your uh, book signing tour of the megalithic European to Scotland, asks Martin. No. Yeah, I will, actually, yeah. Four corners of the British Isles, I'm going. Right. Uh, Kevin Baker says, can you ask the Arch Druid if he has any plans to follow up the modern antiquarian with a similar book on Ireland? Well, you said you've been going to Ireland for a bit. Yeah, I, I've, I've also said if I did one that was purely Ireland, it would be about 700 pages. Mm -hmm. um, the, I don't think Ireland can be done, you know, until mm. they've trashed Ireland with roads. Right, well, there's you too know. much to get to. Yeah. Too, too You've been to, to the go. west of Ireland, you know. Right, okay. Um, and, and also, uh, how about a new album? Which, I mean, you're going to play a new song. Are these songs from a forthcoming album? Yeah! When? I'm doing this album for me because yeah. I've been planning this album for so long, Citizen Kane. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's. I need closure, as the Americans say. I, I On what? On Citizen Kane, I have been planning this album for a long while. Oh, I thought you meant on singing. No, no, no I will. I'll sustain. And you do it, a tour on your own, don't you? I mean, you go yeah. in your in your. Um, I go on a chunky four-wheel four drive. Four by four. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, on my own, and um, I don't have a tour manager. Don't have a roadie. I hire a roadie the other end, so then I don't have to listen to any crap in the car. <laughs> you know, do you sell any T-shirts? Yeah, I, I uh, get somebody that. the other end to you know just mm, say you sell this. That. Wear this, wear this one that you can't buy. Then all the all the yeah. big fans will cluck because they can't buy it. I mean, have you got? I mean, you become a loner through travelling, really. I was always a bit of a loner, but I've become more of a loner. Mm. I love travelling on my own. There's mm. something amazing about it. Are you ever going to get? I remember it, we've talked about it on the program before about um, uh, when you had that camper van with Saint Julian on the doors and you used to park it at the front. I remember seeing you at the Ritz Ballroom down the road. Yeah. You finished, climbed off that mic stand that's in your mysterious room, jumped off to the front of the stage, through the crowd, out the front door, and into a camper van parked outside. As I said to you off <laughs> off microphone, probably not on not off microphone. I am a man of gimmicks. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that. I always thought that was a bit of class. Um, so when when might this album surface? Do we know? December. Okay, uh, this is another song from it, then. Is it? This is another song. This is um, this is a song called "World War Pigs." Right. Got some bad news 
I wasn't sure whether you finished them, but there you go. All right, then. Uh, th I'm just trying to... I was just uh, r r talking to John through the window as well. I wasn't uh, being ignorant and not paying you attention, Julian. I was just trying to decide what record to play next. We're all over the place tonight here, but there you go. Um, right, OK, well, we look forward to all these songs on, uh, on an album in December. Are you going to come back soon and yeah. do something else for us, or...? Yeah. Well, you know, there's no point asking you because you'll say that and then we'll email you and we won't... You know what? Yeah, that's, that's what's good about not having a manager because, you know, it does happen. It will eventually happen. But it just, um... I've got all these agendas. Yeah, all right, yeah. don't worry. So, yeah, it's I, good I, to I, see I, you, though, it's, mate. It's, I mean, it's a long while. It's very good. It's very good. Yeah, no, it has been too long, hasn't it? So we, we'll see you again soon, anyway. Um, on tomorrow night's programme, Jurity Column. When did you last see Vinnie Ryan? Right, uh, performing live. And um, they've got a new best of coming out, right? So uh, we'll get to the uh, end of the Crucial Three. But I think it's only fair because, uh, to uh, preview Vinny coming in as well uh, tomorrow. So uh, we'll have a bit of Jurity Collins. And this is the first track from their first album, which we can do it a bit later. Bump One was Julian Cope's new book, the uh, European megalithic, European uh, neolithic thingy bob thing that's £35. Uh, bump One, 53% of people said it was Bump One, 41% of people said it was Bump Two, 7% of people said don't know on the text, which was a good response because it came to 101%. Uh, this was a Smooth Operations production, 88 and 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC.